Recently, I did a video on how to create a target area for a line chart, like this one over here, which is pretty useful because it puts your numbers into context. What is good, what is bad. However, with what I showed you, that was for a fixed target area. So it doesn't change over time. And maybe what you're looking for is a target area that does change over time. For example, if you want to build a confidence interval around a forecast, and then this is not gonna work. So I thought about it for some time and I have a different solution. Let's call it target area 2.0. Now let's have a look how I did it. Welcome to How to Power BI, my name is Bas, and if this is the very first time for you visiting this channel, then make sure to hit that subscribe button. In my videos, I share everything I know about Power BI. Now let's have a look how you can build a dynamic target area for a line chart. Now, as a starting point, we are not gonna use a normal line chart. No, we are going to use an area chart. Okay, so here I'm going to choose the normal area chart. And for this example, we are going to take the sales forecast and I put it here onto values. And then from my date table, I'm going to take the date hierarchy and put it on the axis. Now I want to expand down to the quarter level and let's maybe go to the monthly level. Now let's clean it up a little bit. So I go here to format, X axis. And here I want to have a categorical date axis and I'm going to turn concatenate labels off, turn the title off looks a little bit cleaner. And then here for the Y axis, I'm also going to turn off the title. Okay, so that starts to look better. Let's also change the title. So over here we go to title and let's change it to sales. Now we have the basic structure. And the next thing that I'm gonna do is I'm going to write a measure for the lower limit of the target area and the upper limit. Now let's say that we want to have around the forecast the target area that goes minus 10% to plus 10% of the forecast. Now let's add the measures for the upper limit and lower limit. So I go here to my table, new measure, and the first one I can call forecast upper limit. And here I'm going to take the value of my forecast. So I have a measure here, sales forecast. I'm going to multiply that by 1.1 uh, because I want to have it 10% higher, okay? So this is measure number one. Then I also need a measure for the lower limit. Let's call this one forecast lower limit. And here we take the forecast value, so sales forecast, and we multiply that by 0.9 because we want to have it 10% lower. So let's add both of these measures to our visualization. So first I take the upper limit and put it below the sales forecast, okay? And, and then I take the lower limit and I put that one right below the upper limit. Now the order in which you put these measures onto values matters because it determines the order in which these series overlap. All right, now at this point we have the sales forecast, we have the lower limit and the upper limit. Now let's make some changes in the formatting options. So here, first of all, I go to data colors and I'm going to put the area transparency, I'm going to put that all the way to the left so that it's 0%, okay? And then the next thing that we can do is that this lower part for the lower limit measure that we want to have white. So the same color as the background color of the visual. Okay, so I'm going to change that to white. Now you can see it looks already like a target area around our forecast line. Now of course, it's not so pretty yet. Let's choose some other colors. For example, here for the upper limit, we can change that to, let's say gray. And then the sales forecast, we leave as it is. Now, before I said that the order in which you put your measures onto values matters. And now this is a little bit more visible because if I would take the upper limit and put it, let's say, below the lower limit, it doesn't work anymore, okay? And also if I put it above the forecast, it doesn't look like I want it to look, okay? So make sure that you put them into the right order on two values. Okay, so now we have a target area for the forecast, but of course we want to compare the forecast to our actual sales and we still need to add it. Okay, so let's take the actual sales and put it also onto values. And this is going to be the first field that I place on values. You see, I place it at the top and this is important. Okay, because it determines how these series overlap. Now, then let's have a look at the visual itself. Hmm, 
still not quite what I'm looking for because it fails everything below the values, below the line, okay? And that's why as soon as we go outside of the target area, it looks kind of ugly. Now this is the part where it gets a little bit tricky because how can we now make sure that we only see the line when it goes above the target area and not the shaded area below it? And what we can do is we can build a dummy measure that basically returns the same values as our sales actuals and add it as well to the values. And then we are going to show that one in white. Okay, so let's do this. Let's add another measure. And this is going to be my sales dummy measure. Okay, so sales uh, dummy. And here I just refer to my sales actual measure. Same values, okay? Now the reason that I need this extra measure is so that I can add it a second time to the values, okay? So here I'm going to take the sales dummy and I'm going to add it to the values. Now also here we have to watch out where we put that dummy measure because it should not be here the first one, it should be the second one below the sales actual measure. And now that we have this, we can go to format and then here we can go to data colors. And for our dummy, we're going to choose a white color. And now if you look closely, you see there is still a line, but the two series overlap, of course, okay? And to show the line now, we have to go to shapes where we can scroll down a little bit and here we can customize each series. So let's turn that on and let's start off with the sales dummy. Now here we can put the stroke width to zero and now you see the line shows up again because we have the same values but one has a borderline or one has the line and the other one doesn't. Okay, and therefore we can see the actual sales line again. Okay, now almost what we are looking for. However, you see that where it goes from inside the target area to outside of the target area, that looks still kind of ugly because it is not a nicely connecting line. And that is because the border line of the target area overlaps with the other one. And to solve this, we can do kind of the same fix as we did before. So we can choose here this forecast upper limit measure and then we put the stroke width for that one to zero. And then for the lower limit we do the same. Also put here the stroke width to zero. So what we have now is a dynamic target area around our forecast line. Exactly what we are looking for. However, of course we can do it still a little bit better and we can adjust the formatting a bit and so that it looks prettier. But also this target area we can connect it to a what if parameter so, we, so that we can nicely adjust the width of the target area. So let's build that next. So for this, we need a what if parameter, which we can insert here under modeling and then new parameter. Now the name of this parameter is going to be the target range. And here we need as a data type, a decimal number because we need percentages later, which will be a number between zero and one. And the increment can be 0 0.05, half of 5%. And the default is going to be 10%. Now add this slicer to the page. So this what if parameter basically just adds a table to our data model called target range, where we have values from zero to one with increments of 5%. It also automatically adds a measure and which shows the selected value in the slicer that we add to the report. Now this is already done. You see we have there a slicer and it can set the value to let's say 15%. Okay, now let's also adjust the formatting. So I click here on the target range column and change it to percentage. And let's go for zero decimals. And then for the target range value, now we can do the same thing. So also here we want to have percentages with zero decimals. Okay, so how can we now use this? Well, we just have to link it to the upper limit and lower limit. So we can go to the lower limit measure and then here instead of 0.9, we can now say that we want to have one and here we have the lower limit, so minus the target range value. And then we're going to do the same thing also for the upper limit, okay? So I go to the upper limit measure and then here we say times, but here we want to have one plus. So now we have both of our measures 
connected to a slicer. So that means if I adjust the target range percentage, so how wide this target range needs to be, then you will see in the visualization, the target range nicely adjusts. And so if I scroll to the right, you see it becomes wider and wider. If I scroll to the left, it becomes less wide. Okay, so now it's time to make the chart a little bit prettier than what we have at the moment. So let's uh, go over some of the formatting options. So here under format, the first thing that I want to do is I'm going to get rid of the legend because here we are looking at sales versus forecast. I can also put that in the title. Okay, so I'm going to get rid of the legend. And instead of that, I'm going to go to my title text and say sales versus forecast. Okay. And then here we can go to the data colors next, where we can adjust the colors a little bit. And I'm going to make the target area a little bit less present. So I'm going to go for a lighter shade of gray. Okay. And then for the lower limit, that stays white. That's fine. Then for the sales forecast itself, we can choose maybe also gray. We can go to shapes next. And here we can adjust the shape for the forecast. Okay. So I would go a little bit more down on the customized series, take the sales forecast, and as a line style, I go for dashed. Okay, so that is a little bit clearer that that is the forecast. Now you might also notice that the grid lines are not present here at the bottom, uh, because there we have a shaded area, right? A white one, which just is the same as the background of the visual. However, it overlaps the grid lines, so we need to get rid of those as well. So let's go here to the y-axis, and then also here we need to scroll down a bit and turn the grid lines off. Now as the next thing, we can take that target range that we built before and make it overlap with the visual itself. Okay, so I'm going to make it a little bit smaller, just like this over here, so that it's in the top right corner. And when you overlap two visuals, just like I'm doing over here, then you probably also wanna group them. Uh, so if you wanna group the slicer with the visual, you just go to view, open up the selection pane, and then here you see both objects, select them holding the control key, and then we can right click and choose group. Okay, so now they're nicely grouped together. So that also means if I hide them, show them, then they appear and disappear altogether. Okay, so as a last finishing touch, let's also add data labels to those points that are outside of the target area for which we need a last measure. Okay, so this is going to be my labels measure. So let's add a new measure, let's call it labels. And here we want to say that if we have a sales value, so I can say here sales actual, if the sales actual is above the upper limit or is below the lower limit, so or we can do with the two pipeline symbols. So here we can say sales actual below the forecast lower limit, then I want to show the actual sales value. So sales actual, otherwise a blank. And I can just leave out that second argument. You don't have to specify it. And so that's the default. Okay. Now, what does this do? It just shows the sales values for those data points that are outside of the target area. So if you add this one also to the visual, let's see what happens. So I'm going to select the visual. Then I take the labels and put the labels here onto values. Now, first of all, you see the colors change a little bit because I added an extra series. However, the interesting thing is that we have now there a dot, a mark, and over there as well. Okay, now let me just change the color of the line back to blue as it was. So I go back to formatting data colors. And then here for the labels, I want to have red. And then over here for the sales actual, there I want to have my blue line. All right, so now you see we have these two dots there at the top and there at the bottom, not the upper one because it's all the way at the top. It's uh, overlapping the borderline a little bit. So let's fix that as well. So Y axis and let's put up the end a little bit so that we go to two and a half million. All right, now we can add data labels to these two points. Now the way to do that is to go to data labels and here we can turn it on but then it turns it on for all of the data points now. So we need to customize the series. Let's turn it on. And then we are going to go and select every single series. So sales actual, turn it off. Sales dummy, turn it off. Sales forecast, turn it off. 
upper limit, turn it off. Lower limit, turn it off. Okay, and then the last one, labels, then we want to keep it. Okay, so now we see we have labels for the upper one and the lower one over there. Now, then we can format the label a little bit nicer. So let's go down a little bit further. Maybe you want to have a little bit of background, make the background a little bit more present so that you can see it a little bit better. And then for the color, we can also choose red. Okay, and then maybe also the font family, let's go for Segue Bolt. All right, so that's it. Now we have a line chart with a dynamic target area. We can adjust the size of the target area by scrolling over here, slicing to the left and to the right. And we have dynamic labels that show for those data points that are outside of the target area. Now, I hope that you got some value out of this movie. If you did, then consider subscribing. And if you have any questions, then post them in the comment section below. I hope to see you in the next video.